Um, so Bob, we recently released a product called Cloaked Search, and I think there's some kind of misunderstandings about it. And one of the ones that I've heard is like, I don't understand what this encrypted search thing is. Like I can already encrypt the index using, you know, Elasticsearch or whatever. Um, how's what we do different? Well, I think almost always when people think about um, that kind of encryption, it's like, well, it's safe because it's encrypted. They, they're thinking about and they're being told that the service that's holding the data is encrypting it. It is on the disk. And so it's encryption at rest. And we like to say bad things about encryption at rest as a uh, security approach because it doesn't really protect very much at all. So we want to talk about ways that we can actually secure the data that are more meaningful, and but that still allow you to do what you need to do. And I think, you know, searching on encrypted data is a topic that's been researched for a long time, and it's very hard in it, to do it in super secure ways. Yeah, I mean, you know, one, well, one thing to think about is the difference between, like, can an administrator who's overly curious or something peek at the data, right? And if they look at the data, are they seeing something meaningful? Are they, are they gleaning secrets from customers or something? And if it's encrypted before it goes to the index, then it's, then it's meaningfully protected from someone on a running server who has access. Uh, or a hacker maybe, or an right. Amazon employee, whatever it is, right? And and if it's encrypted kind of after it goes to the index, underneath the index, it's not really protected when it's running. So right. that's the first thing. So so the the ideally, you encrypt the data before it goes to the index, but you don't lose the ability to, to actually find your data. You don't want to have to like download all your data and then decrypt no. it and then search over it. That would be terrible, right? You want to search on already encrypted data so that people can't, learn about the data by looking at it. Right. And there are a number of different techniques for doing that. And some of them have differing degrees of security, I guess. Um, there, they, all, invariably, there's going to be some amount of information that you can glean, even if you can't look at the data and just obviously see what, what the contents are. And so there's a kind of a continuum of different ways that you can protect the data and still allow someone to search on it. And uh, I mean, there are, there are some that are very good, that mm -hmm. leak very little information, but a lot of those are either very, very compute intensive or they have a very restricted domain. So maybe you could make this work if you knew that all of your data was social security numbers, but if you wanted to protect the plan you have for your company, you can't do that. So um, other methods are more general purpose, but they leak more information. So there's a potential for a very determined and knowledgeable attacker that had a lot of access maybe could glean some more information about the data, but it's it's more usable across wider domains or right. with less compute power. Yeah, one one thing we've learned since we uh, started selling encryption solutions is that, you know, the kind of the perfect security stuff is sometimes at odds with meeting people where they are, and and we have I very idealized, very good, strong solutions. But sometimes what people need is something that's that fits in better with their existing stack, right? And so many of the research technologies require you to build a, a search service from scratch where most people are already using a popular search service for good reasons, like reasons of how it scales and shards and, you know, all these other things. And so, you know, when we were looking at building a product that would, you know, encrypt and secure the search data, our first requirement was actually to work with existing search services, which which colored our approach a little bit, which is why we chose this thing that, that is sometimes referred to as a blind index. Yeah, a, uh, a way to do this that will still support an existing service is to take mo uh, most, a lot of popular search services, take the data that you want to search, and it's usually textual data, and they break it up into words and then they build this index from the words. And so it's basically a map from a word to the places where you can find that word and they're, you know, documents or files or whatever. 
And um, yeah, it's just just like the index in the back of a book, really, right? Right, except, right. Except you know, it might cover lots of books. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so this, you know, this kind of inverted index technique has been around I mean, as long as I have, and that's that's a while. <laughs> you know, let's be honest here. So um, the idea is that we t- we continue to do sort of that same thing. We still take those documents, we pull the words out of them, but we tokenize them in a way that it obscures their, the word. And so you can think about um, hashing words. So you take, you take the words and you hash them and it produces a representation of the word. And you can't go backwards. So if you, if you dug in the search index and you found all these hashes, you couldn't go backwards to find out what the words are. But they're in there. And then when you do a search, when you query the data that's in the index... If you do the same process of tokenization, the search service doesn't care that the thing you're looking for is some random hex string instead of frog or cat. It can still do its job the same way, but curious administrators or hackers can't go through that data easily and and reverse it. Right. So in addition to protecting the data that's in the index, and in a typical index, you can basically recreate a document from the index with, you know, you can you can find like what that message was or whatever that, that it's indexed. But in addition to protecting the, the data itself, you're also protecting the queries because they are also protected in this way. And it's not just a, a hash though, right? I mean, it's keyed. So, so um, in our systems, First of all, we, we support multi-tenant if you want. If you want to segment the data and say, you know, this, this group or this customer in a SaaS application or something like that has access to this data and, and not that data, then, then you, you have different keys, which could be held by the customer ultimately. Uh, and then we go many steps further, right, by, by having uh, these sub-keys and sub-keys so that, so that you can't glean as much information from the these representative deterministic tokens right. as you might be able to otherwise because it doesn't bleed between fields or between customers or anything like that. Right. Yeah. That, I mean, that is the primary issue with deterministic tokenization routines or encryption routines. Um, you, you, I mean, if you want to use an existing search service, you really don't have much choice but to do a deterministic approach. And so people can use frequency analysis to try to to try to figure out what what this token likely means. But if you use different keys for different fields and for different tenants or segments of the data, it frustrates that frequency analysis. It makes it a lot less likely that you're going to be able to successfully recover some of that data. So that's the approach that we decided to use. It's kind of, you know, it's a mixture of security and pragmatism. It's like, well, we are able to work with existing search services like Elasticsearch or OpenSearch. Right. You can use you can use these things that you're already maybe familiar with using, set up to use, but um, it's super hard to even yeah. if you, even if you have complete access, you can't just go in there and like back recreate documents and easily extract information. Right. In in practice, actually, it's it's fairly difficult. You can maybe figure out. If you don't have it as a stop word, you can figure out what the or a is, mm-hmm. or have some likelihood of, of pinpointing the and a. But you know the word microphone. Good luck figuring out which one the word microphone right. is, or whatever it is, right? And and so, what this is 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 a um, not the I, not the best encrypted solution available as far as security and protection against a determined adversary with all of the information who is able to do a lot of analysis on the traffic and what people are searching for, maybe has knowledge of what they're searching, for, anything like that. Um, but in, in the 90% case of attackers here, we're talking about someone coming in and grabbing the data off the disk or an administrator who wants to peek at something or query it or whatever. And you can fill, you know, funnel all that through an application that has access controls that will greatly constrain who can do that and help yeah. you know who has done it. You can make it so that the keys are held by the customers. So if they revoke the key, then no one can search their data. The data that's in that index is now effectively like it might as well have been deleted, at least the protected data. Because we don't, we don't it's not an all or nothing approach, actually. Right. We let you configure the system so that you can decide what data is sensitive and for the data that's not sensitive, you might as well just 
continue to use Elasticsearch normally? If you're not worried about people looking in the field that's got the like the list of items that are in your product catalog, since they could just go look on your website and find that, you don't have to apply the indexing techniques. But if there are fields that are sensitive, you can apply them, and we can mix and match and support both of those things. Yeah, and it works great. You know, if you need if you need to do uh, let's say names, and you like to be able to look up names partially. So that if someone types P-A-T Patrick comes up, we support that kind of search. We, we, have, uh, we can't support every type of search you would do on unencrypted data, but we actually have ability to do things like uh, phonetic searches and wildcard searches, at least with a wildcard on either end. Um, you do have to like, make the determination on how you're going to search that data before you index it. Right. That's an important sort of uh, change. Well, it can be a change. It's it's actually sometimes true also in standard elastic search true. open search. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's that's a blind search in a nutshell. Yeah, we hope that you found this edifying. <laughs>